God is minor. Uh, Robert's got an issue with right shoulder injury. He's talking well. He might not think it's an issue directly because he's on about uh, rugby, sort of like sublux, and every now and again he feels like he has to move it and it clicks. Yeah, that sort of thing. But as you look at him, his right shoulder's forward. Can you see that or not? Yeah. So you can see the anterior part of the shoulder. Okay. You can have a look at it from the posterior. You can have a look at it from the acromion posterior there on this side. And then this gap is more yeah, on this side. And then if you drop down, you can see that it is more forward compared to the right side. In terms of muscles, then it might be that the shoulder is forward by the pectoralis minor, but it's more tension on his right side and here compared to his left side. So maybe it's pulling from the coracoid in that area. If his elbows are bent, there's three muscles that go to the coracoid, bicep, but then if the elbow is flexed, can you see that we take out the bicep? If his arms are by, by his side, yeah, then biceps could be involved in that, yeah, as in pulling it forward. Whereas if your arms are across your chest, you're like, no, it's across your waist. And at least now the bicep is relaxed because it's in a short position. So in reality, if it's forward, it could be the pec minor is pulling you forward. If the pec minor, this is, is not a picture of this in the notes. Um, it's in my, I know I've suddenly got my MET book. It's, it's a lot that's in there. And um, so if it's forward, the pec minor, it could compromise the neural plexus. So you can have like a, a thoracic outlet syndrome. Yes, pec minor is a shoulder muscle, but it's causing the compression of the nerves. So it's hard to say it's a shoulder problem. It's not really a shoulder problem as such. It's not a shoulder joint. It's just because you type a lot or you use the right arm a lot or something, then it might be that the pec minor on the side has decided to become shortened. And as a result, it's pulling forward, which is then compromising the artery and the blood vessels, sorry, the, the nerves, which is then giving you this perceived stomach coming down. So the first one is just an observation test rather than a sort of standard test. So it's a, you look first at the pec minor. Yeah. yeah. From there, both arms over your head, please. Now if I tuck this under, relax, relax the head. Good. So there's a sort of gap either side. Let me take the weight of the arms. We don't spend too much time in this. Slowly lower the arms down. And you'll notice that the right one is up further than the left, and the left one is more abducted, or adducted, whichever way you look at it, compared to the right side. So this one is more pec fibers are tighter on this side, could also be other things, but we're just looking at muscles for now. And then this side wants to deviate out a little bit. So the pecs are tighter on the right, and the lats are tighter on the left. Let me just show you that one again. So hold both the arms and slowly lower it down. And then the ideal situation would be the arms would go flat against the couch, so if they don't go flat and there's a gap, for instance, some of you, when you, when you hold your arm, just hold your arms there, you might see that. That's a very obvious tightness of the pectoralis muscle, pec fibers. When I say pec fibers, you can see them on him. See the sternal fibers there? So those fibers might be held in a short position, and it limits how much movement you've got in that flexion. If you notice, as an example, the elbow is like this, bend the elbow, is like that. Then it might indicate a very obvious latissimus tightness on the right side. Bear that in mind, the lats on the right connects to the glutes on the left. So it might well be overactive because the glutes on this left side is underactive. So again, bear that in mind when you're looking. So with the arms in this position, slowly lower them down. And you're looking to see, is there a resistance? You can see there's a gap. Yes, they're tight. If you say one to five, or zero to five, five being the tightest, so that would be like a five, and that would be a four, and that would be a three, and that would be a two, and that would be a one, and that would be all the way down to zero. So you could grade it. You couldn't really grade it. You tend to use a goniometer to measure distance and stuff, or the angle. But uh, in reality, he'd be a one in terms of tightness. Any higher, be two, three, and so on. Okay. Some of you will be pretty high about that. Be careful because it could also be the thoracic. If you were quite hypotic, you're not going to be able to lift your shoulder over your head anyway. So again, you might want to look at the T spine. Also, it could be an issue with an AC joint. It could be an issue with an impingement. All of it could hurt and limit the movement. So in this case, if you look at that right shoulder. Rob, sorry, if you look okay? Yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, it's not irritating at all? No. Yeah. Just let the arms just do what we want to pick up the leg up. So lower the arms down. So when he's relaxed, just let them do what we want to do. And as you lower it, if the arms want to deviate, like the left one wants to deviate out, sir. Yeah? Okay, it wants to come out, sir. Yeah? I've cut holding the right one because it, if, if I didn't relax it anymore, it would irritate. Pop out forward, yeah. Um, so he's probably got like a, a subluxed sort of issue with the shoulder, the anterior probably um, is, is more weakened. This is difficult because it's been a while, isn't it? 20 years? Yeah, about, yeah 20 years, yeah. 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 Okay, so in reality, is it going to change much? You'd almost want to be strengthening it from a weak position here, as in 
and like fair bands from this sort of angle. Um, if you dislocate the shoulder, bend the elbow, so from there, you okay there? You might have a fair band, and then from this unstable position, like I wouldn't like that position there, you'd almost have a fair band, or you'd have like little weights, and then you'd drop them in and you'd catch them, so the proprioceptors would fire in, that sort of thing, from this sort of angle. Yes, yeah, so you would catch them as you, as you drop the weight, or you just push the weight, and you have to fire up the anterior part of the shoulder, because this is the weak position, or the apprehensive position for the shoulder. Come back, we'll come back to that. Um, if you want to do one set at a time, so lower the arm down. If the arm goes, touches, X are okay. If the arm comes down and deviates, if you see the way of straight in his elbow, if the arm pulls out, which it does, so the lats are tighter on this left side. So it pulls on that one. So that means the pec is slightly tighter on the right, but it's probably not tight, it's probably because he's apprehensive about the position. Yeah, rather than it being a tightness. If you were to feel the pecs and lower it down, you know, there's not obvious tightness in that sternal fiber of the pec. Some of you would be very tight in that sort of position and you can feel it. So he's actually okay in that one. But the lats are a little bit tight. From this position, externally rotate. So 90 degrees of abduction, 90 degrees of elbow flexion. And then from there, slowly externally check liquor. So externally rotate and you should be able to get to 90 degrees. What muscle are you testing for? You know, if you've got a frozen shoulder, you know where you're not going to be able to do any of this. Subscap. Subscap. So that might be a test of subscap. And then from there, we're going to then roll in, and we're looking at about 70 degrees, and he's okay. So his subscap is okay, his infraspinatus is okay because he gets to about 70 degrees. His pex is okay, his lats are slight, slightly tight, not much, in terms of graded. 1 to 5, 5 being tight, let's see if we run the 1. And on this one, let me control the shoulder. So lower down. So he's definitely a little tighter now, whether it's an apprehensive and he's just naturally tight enough, but the pec tight. Fibers are just slightly taut compared to the opposite side. Let the arm go. The lats, a little deviation, but not much from there. So if I control the rotation. Sorry, yeah, just came out there. Yeah. So there's a sublux, so is a, you know, is that sort of weak position. Um, but in terms of training him, you wouldn't want to be doing too much of this and too much of this. It's all from this position. You're trying to strengthen it from the weak position. Yeah, because you're not really going to get any better by doing this. It has to be controlled from there. Alright, so from there, you okay? Let me, I know you might not like. Okay, subscap so length is okay. No worries. Eh? And in for a little bit tighter, but not drastic. You get about 0 degrees, then you get towards 70, that's okay. We'll come on to the apprehension test later. Okay. UK knows five tests. <coughs> so the tech minor, forward and outside, where this is a protection for him. And then, so from there, you've got the pecs, the lats the infra and the subscap. So if you want to maybe have a go at just testing them. Because once you, once you find them, we then treat them, and then we move on to uh, the other aspects.